Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, I'm going to show you three of my tools that I use for deburring pipework. So that's whether you're cutting through copper or plastic, we all should be deburring that pipe to get rid of the external and the internal bore. And I know what you're going to say, Matt, I very rarely see you do it. And I know it is a habit that I really, really need and want to get into. I get constantly comments about deburring pipe, whether I'm doing plastic or copper work, especially for soldering and stuff like that. Uh, I, I know the key factor is the reason why we should do it. So one main one, especially for plastic pipe, is that hair and stuff like that can get caught on the little jaggedy edges. So it definitely needs to be removed for that um, instance. And with copper pipe, I'm pretty sure it can cause turbulence in the water. So what happens is, is where you've got the internal, when you cut a piece of pipe, the ends sort of come in like this. And as the waterways come through, it generates turbulence going through. And I'm, I get told all the time that this can actually cause pinholing. In the UK, we obviously bend a lot of our copper pipes and that is um, like narrowing the thickness of the actual copper. And the last thing we want is more cases of pinholing because I'm pretty sure that that's going to be the weak point where it goes at. So yeah, I'm going to show you three different tools that I like to carry. The first one is the rigid. So this is a pipe deburrer. I'm pretty sure this is the smallest one they do. We've got a external burr here and a internal on this comb. There is lots of different deburring tools for copper um, and they have got like tiny little blades on them and I just find it just skags the edges of them. And if you already have one of them, then I would probably definitely recommend you go over to something like this. Honestly, when you use it, as soon as you feel what you're actually deburring, you'll notice a difference 100%. I know I did. So when you cut copper pipe, especially with a hacksaw, you get a real jagged external edge like this. And when you cut it with a pipe slice, you'll get an edge which curves inwards. So obviously this is where the turbulence is going to go from. And I don't know how much uh, turbulence or effect in this would do. But I know especially if you're going to use a press fit, then when you're pushing the joints over the top of the copper, they have an O-ring on the inside. And what you want to do is be able to deburr your copper pipe so we've got a nice smooth finish. So when you're pushing it into the fittings, we don't cut that rubber on the inside. So yeah, I'm going to quickly show you exactly what happens when you deburr a pipe. So this is a piece of pipe that's been cut with a hacksaw. And what you want to do is use the external type and it's just a quick little wrist action and it takes that edge completely off as you can see, nice and smooth. On the internal, what you want to do is use the cone end. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it a nice, I'm pretty sure this takes a little bit longer to get it, but just quickly you can see here that that internal has come off and we've got a nice little chamfer on the inside. So that is for deburring copper pipe. If you don't want to spend out a lot of money on these ones, because these can be quite pricey, uh, Milwaukee or and other brands do a pen type. So this, you literally go in and you give it a quick run round and it does pretty much the same job as one of these. But yeah, I like to carry this one because I can do inside and out. But like I said, if you can't afford these ones, then this one would do pretty much on your inside of copper pipe, which is probably most important. But obviously if you're pressing, then yeah, you're just going to have to spend a little bit more money. So plastic pipes also need deburring. I found that if you're cutting these with a hacksaw or even a big pair of cutters, so like the big blades that go over the top and cut, what that would do is it won't allow you to push into the fitting properly. So I found out the hard way, I kept going up to fittings where I had to glue them, went to push in and it was always that little bit stiff. So the one that I like to use for deburring plastic is one from Monument. So I'm pretty sure this is called a Burfect plastic pipe and it does loads of different sizes. So I'm from the UK. What this would do is pretty much your overthrow pipe all the way up to two inch. All you have to do is just rotate to your size. And because it's got a triangle shape, it does the inside and the outside at the same time. So this is a piece of plastic pipe that I cut with a hacksaw. Obviously you can see it's got loads of little jagged edges all over it. And um, we'll just find the inch and a half size, which is here. I'll flip it around so you can see. And it literally takes, no time and it takes a deburr completely off so you've got a deburred inside and an outside so now when you push this over your pipes to glue them they go in snuggy buggy first time all the time so yeah deburring is a very vital step that you need to do especially if you're doing copper work or plastic 
I know myself that I need to do this a lot more. I definitely need to get into the habit of it. I know the pros from it. And yeah, it's just one of those things that we get drilled into it a little bit at college. But I don't know many plumbers, especially that I've seen, that constantly deburr. So yeah, that's my three different types of tools that I use for deburring and what I should be doing in the future. But yeah, I'll link them down below. But if you like today's plumbing video, please give it a like. Drop a comment down below. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you on the next one.